Thank you very much for the warm introduction, Toastmaster of the Day. Today, I have a story for you. It's a little bit based on history. The Burmese and Thai have been in conflict stemming from religious artifacts for hundreds of years, maybe thousands. As a result, long-term, deep-seated political impact makes it difficult for normal people to get a student visa in Thailand, or even the same standards as other foreign nationals in the ranging immigration processes. Bringing it back home, I can say that I am fortunate enough to be a father in our version of the American dream, where and after a year or so, they're in the process of building three languages, their own native language, English and Thai, English by preference over Thai. Hopefully, I'll take them from a total of three years of education, the GED, and enter university. However, there are people who need them back home in Burma, and so they told me they're only going to be here for a year. And that came out recently. There are other questions within their mind as they go about their day to day and they live in a society that looks down on them. In a society where asking for help, people have become more and more shy, more and more afraid to ask people for help. More green jack. Should I stay a year, save, and then return to my mountain tribe to care for my beloved elderly? Or should I develop my skills to max out my earn monthly earnings, create an annual rotation of family members caring for our elderly and our generational home, homestead? In my work these days, I meet a lot of people and they don't believe it when they see an outstretched hand in front of them, ready to help. And sometimes in their eyes, I see suspicion or something else. Or what's right and good is just too hard to see. What it takes as I reflect on my leadership path is waking up each day and looking them in the eye, making, making smiling, and, and acknowledging, email. wishing them a good morning and a good day, explaining that as I am the oldest in the household, I am at their service as the bottom of the totem pole totem pole. I will be ground to dust as I age and pass with each newest generation at the top, like you, nun, and each aging person in support and love for the next. While being certain to look at the growing forest of totem poles around you, for they represent every one of the 10 billion plus living souls on this planet. That's generations. Right? Infographics on generations. That's for you, Nun. Recently, two more souls dropped into this situation. A Burmese English teacher and his wife exiting their home country as the political and social climate continues to destabilize. Unable to receive accreditation for their university degree, maybe, or even simple high school certification documents, they are here to stay vowing not to return. He will be a teacher in Thailand, but who will hire him and sponsor his visa? Who will help him earn and then pay for a university degree that would help them obtain a visa that means sanctuary, four years. And then after that, that would be working as a teacher officially with documentation and reportable income. Without any organizational help, this husband and wife must labor and work. They must apply for an immigrant laborer visa, and the mind of a teacher would be swirling as he labored with his hands. The hypothesis to solve this sticky scenario is open educational opportunities and language acquisition and digital literacy. I guess it's three. Enable pathways and passage to barriers of entry. That's digital literacy too. I had some stories about emails that I can't get into now. 
Methodology and skills building aside, how many years would it take for this couple, husband and wife, to function as social, as a social and educational gateway for people like the ladies who love and care for my sons? Boom, boom. That's him and his wife. That's Lou. And these are his students over here who all of these people actually need visas as well. Um, but the student visa thing, politics, Burma, Thailand, some things there, it's difficult. It's not easy. And it takes a lot of money as well. More money than it should for another foreign national as well. How can they function as a new social and educational gateway? For people like the ladies who love and care for my sons. For students who want to learn. For people seeking a refuge or minds yearning for different dynamic work. One of my ladies is unhappy sometimes and it's because she's too smart and she shouldn't do this work. And I wanna help her get out of that, <laughs> but it's hard. To break each barrier, the categories are four. One, what can I and can't do yet? Why and what is stopping me? Two, what funds do I need? Three, what documentation in society enables me passage? A ticket, a degree, a certificate. LinkedIn, none. <clears throat> Four, what do I need to be able to do? What skills do I need to be successful in? What do I need to be able to do? at the drop of a hat. Bah. The rest of this is live now. We built a Rube, Rube Goldberg at my school with three Korean kids who are eight years old and nine years old. It was quite difficult and mayhem because I let them do their thing. People don't like it when you tell them what to do. They don't like it when they're uncomfortable. You have to guide them. You have to keep the environment nice and calm and chill. You have to be helping and you have to be willing to do any role. And you have to be accepting, very, very accepting of all of the differences. Bringing people together though, that's the funnest part because this series here was, was three actually. It was like one where I threw a bunch of items there and I told them, go at it guys. And then, the second day after reflection and actually mindfulness time with some ideas showing them you can build it like this, we went with day two. And day two was this very, very calm, comfortable vibe. So the purpose of the speech is we need funding. We can't pay much. And we need experts. <laughs> Web hosting costs. Computers, iPads, phones, Legos, notebooks, whiteboard markers. Oh my God, the whiteboard markers. Clothes, t-shirts, toilet paper, and so much toilet paper and trash bags. In conclusion for today, I have two things to share. A summary and our job post. There is a chasm between people these days. What one person can do with a computer, a family struggles to find workarounds. Over the last five years, I've tended to hire people who are in the most need of a job, a sanctuary, a place to be welcomed and listened to an environment in which growth mindsets reign. An environment in which growth mindsets reign and keen awareness of a person's desires that power them through each day. If you're sweet and kind and can tell yourself, my job is now to teach, to open those, open doors for those daring to cross this threshold. We are looking for people who are tidy, clean, arrangers and organizers. You have a big heart 
but you have your personal tendencies as well. You're a little crazy sometimes, but you have learned with time and experience and care to breathe in and out and maintain composure. You like to sing tunes and have a smorgasbord of rhymes stored in your head that come about suddenly from time to time and are filled with affectable ethics, morals, and tidbits of knowledge. Teaching basic arithmetic, scientific concepts, and sustainability are as natural to you as teaching a child to recognize shapes in animals. You're savvy with online educational platforms and have experience adapting content relatively fluidly and with sometimes personal style. You also like to tinker around with furniture and interesting adaptations of resourcefulness to create better surroundings. You're human and speaking an environment of growth, acceptance and kindness, willing to focus on strengths to bring about, bring about positive outcomes. You're flexible and adaptive and reasonable. Uh, I need to make some kind of I lead, I'm a leader statement here. Uh, um, okay, I'm going with it. I'm going with it. Here we go. I think being a leader is being the top bottom of the totem pole. Uh, it's being the person in the group who everybody hates the most. It's the guy that has to be separate from everybody else when everybody else is having fun. Um, it's the person who finishes everything and makes sure that all of everything is going well nice, right? so that everybody else can have peace of mind in whatever they're doing. Wow, you're doing a good job. They can have all of the tools that are necessary within arm's length in the environments that they're in. And he does this silently and quickly like a ninja and janitor. Uh, and that, everyone, is what I think I learned about leadership here in this path. Thank you.